Utah has been ranked the best state to live in the United States for the second year in a row. That's why you had the yeah, two, not, right? Yeah, not, we're number two. We're, if we're number one, two yeah. years in a row. So let's talk about why is Utah the best state to live in, and, you know, let's just go through it. Let's go out for it. What does Utah do very well? What does Utah not do so well? Where does it, you know, need some improvement? And we'll just talk about that. And if you are thinking about moving out here to either Salt Lake City or Southern Utah, this video may help you decide whether or not you're going to choose Utah or somewhere else. So let's start with the bad. So Utah actually, so what basically U.S. News & World Report did is they took eight different rankings and then they ranked each state on those rankings and then whoever had the best total, that is who won or whatever, right? Yeah, so eight categories. Eight categories. So they had crime and corrections, which basically they looked at corrections outcomes and public safety. They had economy, which they basically used the business environment, employment and growth. They had education, so basically outcomes not only in pre-K through 12, but also higher education. They had fiscal stability, so they looked at long-term stability and short-term stability. They had healthcare, and they looked at access, quality, as well as public health outcomes. They had infrastructure, which basically is energy, internet access, and transportation. They had natural environment, which is basically just pollution, right? Air and water quality and other, you know, sorts of pollution. And then opportunity, which basically was just affordability, cost of living, economic opportunity, the median income level, and poverty rate. So oh, that's a lot of stuff. And it's pretty comprehensive. Pretty comprehensive, yeah. So let's start with the bad. So no surprise if you've ever been to Salt Lake City in the winter and you've experienced the inversion event, but the natural environment in Utah was number 46. That's actually the only category that was under the top 20. Yeah. So, I mean, in, in a way, it, it's almost not their fault because... It's how it's shaped. Yeah, Salt Lake City is in a bowl. So basically what happens is pollution, mostly from cars, basically gets trapped. So, yeah, the air quality there... Yeah, so Salt Lake City is elevated, and yeah. then you have these ridges along the whole yeah. exterior of it, and then that pollution just kind of settles and kind of collapses in, yeah. so it makes it bad. Now, obviously, we're in the south southwestern Utah region, St. George, and basically, whatever Salt Lake City has going on from that perspective, we actually don't not have it all. We actually have yeah. pretty, pretty very good air quality, as a matter of fact. So before we continue, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Sean Dazad. And I'm Courtney Dazad. And I'm a licensed realtor here in the state of Utah. And if you're watching this channel, you might be thinking, well, Sean, I love St. George. I love the blue skies. I love the beautiful weather. I can't wait to move in here now. The problem is I'm not local and maybe even out of state, so I don't know what to do. And I totally get that. That's when you reach out to us. So we can have that conversation and we can be your boots on the ground. We actually work with a team that has actually over 40 years of experience here in the St. George region itself. So we know all the nooks and crannies, all the little odds and ends of this area. So we can really be that resource for you to find that perfect home. So what you want to do is you want to give us a call or shoot us a text. Yes, that number is a cell phone, so you can call us or text us, or you can use WhatsApp if you're outside the country. Yeah, I think recently Southern Utah got ranked one of the best air quality places in the United States. But obviously, you know, the majority of the population in Utah lives in Northern Utah, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, so I just kind of, obviously, yeah, chances are if you're watching this video, you're probably more keyed in on North, you know, North, Northern Utah, where Salt Lake City is, or the surrounding areas. But yes, the, the whole state is in one uniform way, of course. Yeah, we're in southern Utah, which is only an hour and 45 minutes from Las Vegas. So our climate, and I wouldn't really say what it looks like. We don't really look like Vegas. No. But, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, we have, do have a lot of similarities in terms of climate to Vegas. So it's, it's a much, it's very different to Salt Lake City. And then let's just go up from there. So the next worst one, although I wouldn't call this bad at all, opportunity <laughs> number 18. So still yes. in the top 20 for all the states. And I'm guessing probably some of it was affordability, probably yes. why it got dinged. You want to talk a little bit about? Yeah, exactly. So basically Utah itself, like as a whole state, definitely higher than the median price point of the United States in general. Probably about a good 25% higher than the median home price of the, the, the country. So of course, so therefore affordability suffers from that perspective. Uh, the other components of actually the opportunity index, I would say we actually scored really well. And it's just that the affordability yeah. from a home perspective, we are a bit of a premium. But again, you have to understand, we always kind of, whenever we bring up affordability in the area, the biggest takeaway is really, you have to understand that Utah, the entire state, honestly, like, so whether you're in the Salt Lake City region, like, you know, Park City and all that stuff, or you're in southwestern Utah, like next to Zion or all these things, these are destination. These are like travel destinations. And pretty much every travel destination has some sort of premium to owning that because that's people yeah. want to be there, right? I mean, there's a lot of, there's definitely a lot of places in the country that are just not as desirable from a natural 
beauty standpoint. Yeah. And so basically we, there is a premium, but we're not significant. Obviously, if you're talking about other parts of the country, that premium for being a travel destination can be multiples of what yeah. the median price point. I mean, yeah. you know, not just like a 25% <laughs> premium. I'm talking about like 300, 500, 1000%, maybe yeah. all across the board. So we're not actually that much of a premium considering that we are a destination here. Next up is healthcare. That's number 14. So again, you know, well into the top 20. So yeah, so they base it on access, quality, and public health. And what's interesting, I think that's uh, that's unique, at least to the region that we're in, because we're a very much smaller area than Salt Lake City. I mean, we only have a metro population of about 200,000. Yes. Whereas the majority of the population is in northern Utah, right? Or it's closer to 300, uh, 3 million. Yeah, closer to 3 million up there. So what's interesting, though, is that Utah has very highly ranked healthcare, and that includes us as well. It's yes. interesting that a small metro population would have a highly ranked hospital and healthcare system, which we do. Yes, our Intermountain uh, Regional uh, Hospital here is ranked, depending on the year, two, number two or number three in the state. And Utah itself ranks really high. So we, just in our own backyard, we have fantastic healthcare. Yeah, I think part of it is that it's easier to attract doctors here because like Sean was saying, you know, it's a desirable place to live. All of Utah, right? So, yeah. you know, so more from, doctors apply. Exactly, yeah. So it's a, <laughs> it's a fantastic destination. People yeah. want to be here. The premium to home ownership isn't ridiculously high. And yeah. again, there's also really good healthcare facilities. Yeah. And then the rest of the categories, Utah is in the top 10. Woo! And so ranked number nine is crime and correction. So that's corrections, outcome, and public safety. So one, I always have this caveat. So that this is obviously, this is a pretty big catch-all. So as far as crime and safety, I have to have my normal disclaimer that that is a very subjective measure. There are tons of resources out there that will, you know, you can find out more specifics about what the crime rate is or whatever in your specific area. But let's say you do decide on a specific area that you want to move to. I always recommend going to that place multiple times of the day and in the evening, really get a good feel. Besides obviously the resources, those are just data points, but also how does it feel for you? Because what I might think is safe, what you might think is safe could be completely different things. So that's where, again, it's super subjective and that's, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So next up is fiscal stability. That's number six. So yeah, I mean, I think Utah's kinda, run well. <laughs> yeah. Kind of always had a reputation of, you know, being a fiscally stable state. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's kind of, I haven't had to, I mean, people will complain, right? Because yeah, everyone course. has, I mean, yeah. which is good. You want, yeah. you want people to stay on it, you know, be, you know, yeah. be on it, but like, Keep the I, government accountable yes. for sure, but there's definitely way <laughs> worse states run than yeah. Utah. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say there's any like well-run government. Yeah, but yeah, as exactly. far as governments go, like hey, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And also, you know, and, and adding on to that, they do. To, it does feel like whatever they do, they're not. It's not just to get reelected that next election. There is a long-term yeah. thought process that goes into all this stuff. I would say so. And then tied at number three, we have infrastructure and economy. I mean, you want to talk about infrastructure. So I would say, so they're talking about energy, internet access, transportation. So energy here is super, super cheap. I yes, mean, again, that's, we're, we're in yeah. Southern Utah. We're in, yeah. you know, so if you look at Wallet Hub, like, you know, the, if you look at the actual costs, it's actually, you know, besides housing, right? Like everything else is actually at or well below the median price point yeah. of the country. So. Energy is one of those things that we obviously benefit from tremendously because you can have a house, especially again in Southern Utah, where it gets hot in the summer for sure. You can have that air conditioning cranking for a pretty good sized house. We're talking about like 3,000 or so square feet. And you'd be shocked by how low the energy cost is comparing that same energy usage in other parts of the country. I mean, it is yeah. very inexpensive. So from that perspective, internet access is actually really good. Like you yeah. know, there's fiber like all over the place. So I would actually say the internet, internet access is really good as well. Yeah, and then in terms of transportation, I'm sure probably what sort of put it up a little bit is that Salt Lake City does have some public transportation. So, of course, it's not as robust as, you know, you go to London or Paris or even New York City, but it does have some, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, Southern Utah definitely does yeah. not excel from that perspective. You're, you're really gonna wanna have a car, realistically. <laughs> yeah, and then economy, that's also ranked number three. So I do think that we should probably, you know, separate Salt Lake City from Southern Utah in that perspective, because obviously we are a smaller metro population. So of course we're not gonna have the same sort of economic opportunities. Like that especially they, as diverse. Yeah, like where you can just find any sort of job. You know, Salt Lake City is becoming a, another big tech hub. I mean, while we have some, you know, companies here, some small companies here that are tech, it's not it's not a big city, right? So Yeah, I wouldn't actually say that given that we're almost on an island, right? Like so there's Las Vegas is like really the nearest metropolis yeah. to this area. 
I would say for being on an island, I think that the the job opportunity is actually really good. It's just that still we're on an island, be, yeah. realistically speaking. So when you have about 200,000 people, again, re- remote working has become way more of a thing, of course, in the last yeah. few years. So a lot of people have taken advantage of it because they want to be in a destination they they want to reside in. But, uh, you know, before they would actually have to, <laughs> they could, you know, making that commute is kind of a little bit difficult to do it day in, day out. So that remote opportunity or some hybrid like possibilities have opened up possibilities. However, still having said that, we're not, we're certainly not what Salt Lake City is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I feel like we're kind of getting shortchanged here because actually, you know, we're ranked number three in this for as far as the state for economy. There's actually several publications I've, out there that I've actually ranked Utah number one for a couple of years in a row now. So I'm fine that mm-hmm. we're ranked number one period overall, but still. Yeah, I think that they dinged us a little bit unnecessarily. <laughs> and I will say just for here in the southern Utah region, if you are honing in on that, if you are an entrepreneur, I will say obviously the state is very business friendly. So that's just, you know, a plus for that. And then the highest ranked category for Utah this year is education. It came in at number two. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, just even around here in this very small little metro area, you've got so much choice in terms of schools, whether you're, you know, pre-K all the way up to university, we have our own university here. So there's a lot of charter schools. There's language immersion programs here. There's a tech high school that just opened. There's an art school. I mean, there's just a lot of choice. There's a very large homeschool population here as well. So you don't have to, you know, I know sometimes if you're in an area where not that many people homeschool, then you're kind of like your kids are isolated. Like there's a lot of larger groups that sort of work together. So yeah, there's a lot of choice here. Yeah, definitely. I would say that like, so from the grade school perspective to high school is awesome. Even higher levels of education, we actually have, even in this uh, this pocket here, we have a university here that actually is super affordable actually. Mm-hmm. And it's really nice. Like, they're, they're growing by leaps and bounds. You see just new infrastructure, new stadium, new aquatic center, all the you know, new rec, rec, rec center. So you're seeing a lot of things happening there. And then of course, in the state of Utah, you have some pretty large schools, of course. Yeah, <laughs> of pretty course large well. universities, yeah. yeah. And remember, I am a licensed realtor here in the state of Utah. So as much as we love making these videos, what we love more is to help you through real, real estate needs. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home, what you need is when you give us a call or shoot us a text. Yes, that number is a cell phone, so you can call us or text us, or you can use WhatsApp if you're outside the country.